You're listening to the Packernet Podcast Network. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome once again to the Packernet Podcast. I am your host and resident panelist, as always, Ryan Schlipp. Check us out online, packernet.com. Find me on Twitter, pack underscore that ad. Well, we are 50 minutes late already because of technical difficulties, so I'm legitimately concerned that there, <laughs> there may not be a podcast again today. Um, I don't know what the heck is going on in the world. I have legitimately been trying to get a podcast out for a week, and I haven't been able to, and hopefully today is is, uh, is a day that it happens. That'd be great. But uh, yeah, it's wonderful be, to be back and all that stuff. Hopefully you guys have been okay. Been getting a lot of messages, a lot of angry messages about um, not having a podcast and whatnot. But anyways, we're probably kind of mostly back. And yes, to answer your question, everything is fine. I try to give you guys updates on social media. So if you're ever curious what's going on, just check Twitter and Facebook and stuff. Um, Did take a family vacation. Mentioned that on the podcast as well, that I'd be on vacation. I wasn't sure if I'd be able to do the thing, and I wasn't. And then yesterday I overslept, and then today my computer's completely broken. But here we go. It's actually kind of a lot going on, and I'm not entirely sure where to start, but we should probably get started by ripping through some of this OTA news because it's OTA time. First of all, a couple quotes that came down the wire from Matt LaFleur when he did his interview. Um, Aaron Rodgers, he mentioned, is not at OTAs. That's a big hubbub. I personally don't really care. Um, He said he'd be here sometime in May or that he might be there in May. I don't know. Um, Where do I personally fall on the should he be there, should he not be there? I tend to fall on the he should be there. There's a whole lot of um, excuse making going on. Um, Does he need to be there personally? No. Although it certainly doesn't hurt. Rob Domofsky went so far as to say it actually helps the wide receivers to not have Aaron Rodgers there because it helps them to learn the system without the pressure of Aaron Rodgers. I think that's kind of silly. First of all, how does having Aaron Rodgers there hinder you from learning the system? There's two parts to learning the system. There's the classroom and then there's on the field work. Right now, they are doing a lot of classroom work and then they go on the field and they have a quarterback throw to them. And right now that quarterback is Jordan Love. There's a lot of talk about, well, it's not about building chemistry right now. You learn the system first, and then you build chemistry later. There's zero reason why you can't also start the process of building some chemistry. Later on in the OTA notes, there was a note about, you know, Jordan Love had a really good day except for one throw where he massively underthrew Christian Watson. My first thought is, you know what, if that's your bad throw, I'm okay with that because, you know, Christian freaking Watson, blazing speed, all that stuff. And so what does that mean, though? Well, Jordan Love has to recalibrate and learn how to throw to Christian Watson and learn his speed and learn all that stuff. Gee, wouldn't it be great if it was Aaron Rodgers going through that process? Christian Watson learning how to catch Aaron Rodgers' passes, Aaron Rodgers learning how to throw to Christian Watson, especially considering his struggles, learning how to throw to MVS. Same being true of all the wide receivers, all their quirks, all their nuances, and all this stuff about, well, you know, you don't want to have to learn stuff from Aaron Rodgers right now. Let's just get the basics down. Well, it kind of sucks to learn the basics and then have Aaron Rodgers show up and be like, yeah, actually, you're doing that wrong. Here's how I want you to do it. Again, it'd be kind of nice if he was just there to get that out of the way now. But he's not there and whatever. Am I going to make a massive deal out of it? No. But I think a lot of the excuse making, a lot of the chatting about, well, it's not a big deal and it's actually better that he's not there is kind of silly. It's better for the team. It's better for Rodgers. It's better for the receivers. It's better for the tight ends. It's better for everybody if everybody's just there learning together. We talked a billion times about how the offensive line is only going to get better when they get one solid group of five that learn to work with each other. It's not just about you learning in a vacuum. It's like my dad always used to tell me, I can read a book about how to be a pilot all I want. I'm never going to learn to be a pilot unless I actually sit in the cockpit and learn to fly it in person. It's not enough to just read the book. Same is true with being a a left guard. You can master left guard play out of every book that has ever existed. But until you learn to play with somebody in front of you and two guys on either side of you, you're never going to get this thing figured out. So again, not a huge deal. They do need to learn the basics and all that stuff, and that's fine. It's not a, you know, massive thing. But it's not better that Rodgers isn't there. It would be better if he was there. And he's choosing not to be there. 
because he's got other stuff going on. And that's fine. But again, I'm always going to respect the guys that show up. The guys like Russell Wilson, who are always going to put in the time, that are going to be there, that are going to build chemistry with their players, that are going to want to go that extra mile to, to, to work with his guys and develop relationships with his guys and all that. I'm always going to respect that more. It's just the way it is. And you can pretend that that's not a thing if you want, but whatever. He'll show up, he'll get there, and they'll learn whenever they learn, however they learn, and it is what it is. But Rodgers is not expected to be here this week, which there's only one more day left in this week as far as OTAs. Then there is a whole other next week of OTAs and then a bunch of other little piddly things here and there. But um, in other words, nothing today. I mean, if you think about it, even if he didn't do a ton of work, just having him stand there. You know, we've seen videos. If you go on Twitter and whatnot, there's a ton of videos. You see videos of guys like um, Kenny Clark showing Devontae Wyatt just little things. Randall Cobb just talking up Christian Watson a little bit. Just to have him there, just to talk and be like, hey, man, when you're running this post, just kind of da-da-da, do this, da you know, this and that, and that, just just little tiny things to help, just to be another coach. It's just, it's silly to me. But as other people have pointed out, we're still in a much better situation than last year where it has nothing to do with him sitting out because he doesn't want to be here. It's just, hey, it's voluntary OTAs. I've done this a million times. I'm, you know too important to be showing up to stupid stuff, and I don't feel like it, so I'm not going to, which, you know, it's a common thing. Um, The not-so-common, not-so-great thing is Sammy Watkins also feels like he's too good to show up. Dude has not even won a roster spot. I would say there's a decent chance he doesn't make the team, not because he didn't show up, but just based on the amount of wide receivers we have. Um... I mean, he's he's gonna have to show he's, he's much better than everybody else to make the team, and so, um considering he's basically the only guy fighting for a roster spot that doesn't know the playbook, that didn't show up during playbook installs, um, that's not great. And I think he maybe lost out on like 50 grand by not showing up. So, I mean, Matt, uh, Aaron Rodgers is one thing. He doesn't have to be there. He knows the offense, all that stuff. Marginal improvements to the wide receivers, tight ends, and everybody else that's there marginal benefit to everybody by him being there he chose not to not a big deal sammy watkins i mean this is your career dude this this is your livelihood this is this is everything i don't i just i will never understand that well i'm working out with my own people dude it's not about working out we know you run fast we know you jump high all that stuff you were drafted like number four overall for a reason you're an athletic freak has nothing to do with your athleticism or your your amount of push-ups or any of that stuff. You need to learn the roster. You need to build chemistry, which unfortunately Rogers isn't there to help you build chemistry, but learn the playbook, learn all that stuff. When you do things wrong, and on a system level, you have Matt LaFleur and, and the coaches there to help you to refine so that you make the team. You absolutely, ha- there, there's no excuse for not being there. None. Um, the the only silver lining here would be Jordan Love getting extra reps because, I mean, let's face it, the, the, the biggest defense of Jordan Love is the fact that he just doesn't get much time. And, and granted, this isn't much practice either. This is this is my biggest issue with people saying, well, he's, he's had two years. Two years of what? Seven on sevens? But it's better than nothing, I guess. Uh, we learned that the Saints are coming to Green Bay for joint practices. I know Aaron Rodgers and some of the guys hate it because it gets a little chippy and... Um, you know, it's just unnecessary to put guys at risk. You know, it's one of those, it's very similar to adding games, you know, 17, 18, 19, 20 games in a season or whatever. I'm not saying it's good. I'm saying I want it. It's kind of like the stimulus checks. Was it stupid? Yes. Am I happy that I got thousands of dollars thrown at me that I didn't need? Of course. I'm not the politicians. I don't have to make these decisions about right and wrong. I just got a check in my bank account. And it made me smile. Is it horrible? Is it, is it the major reason why our economy is, is in the garbage right now? Yeah, probably. Did it cause massive inflation? I mean, yeah, probably. That's not my problem. So if you're asking me, do I like it that the Saints are coming to town and we get interesting, you know, practices? Heck yeah. Am I glad we're adding games? Yeah. But what about player safety? Yeah, I don't know. Sounds, sounds like... Uh, Sounds like it might be a thing. I don't know. Not glad it's not my decision to make. All I know is I get more football. And as I've said, I'm not going to apologize as a football fan for wanting and being happy about more football. I'm just not. So it is what it is, man. I'm pretty pumped. Saints are coming to town. And it's good that it's 
kind of a decent team. I mean, you know, the, the Saints don't have a quarterback. I mean, maybe they do. I don't know. I, I tend to think that their quarterback is terrible. But the rest of their roster is somewhat on point. Better than the Jets and the Houston Texans, at least. And as has been pointed out, the Packers DB group versus the Saints wide receiver group is going to be a fun matchup, which is really weird to say it in that direction. It's such a unique situation to be like, man, their offense against our defense is going to be a great matchup. It just, it feels, it kind of feels bad. I mean, it's great, but how many times have I talked about, you know, the Bears and the Vikings? It's just stupid when they get away from their identity. They're defensive franchises and they should stick with that. And when you try to, you know, become an offensive team that doesn't have a good defense, you just kind of suck. I don't know. Hopefully that's not the case. But you're going to have Michael Thomas, Chris Olave, and Jarvis Landry up against Razul Douglas, Eric Stokes, and Jair Alexander. So assuming we're doing the whole Alexander in the slot thing, you've got Jair going up against Jarvis Landry. Probably Stokes going up against Michael Thomas. And then, um, see, I don't, I don't like any of this. I just don't. Razul against Olave, I guess. I feel like Jair against Olave feels right. Doesn't it? It's not even necessarily a talent thing. I'm not trying to say Alave is just that good, and so we got to put Alexander there. From a talent thing, it's Alexander against Michael Thomas. I'm just talking about build. Michael Thomas is a big dude, 6'3", like 220. Stokes isn't exactly a monster, but he's 6'1", 190 or whatever. Long arms. Alave, 6'187", smaller, faster, twitchier. Jair, 5'10", like 200 pounds. Smaller, faster, twitchier. I don't know. I guess Jair on Landry makes sense. It just... It would just suck if Chris Olave kind of worked any of our guys, and it's like, oh, Olave's so good. It's like, shut up, dude. He's not that good. I'll punch you. <laughs> I'm in a weird mood today. I mean, if Michael Thomas wins, it's Michael Thomas. If if Landry wins, it's friggin' Landry. But I just, Packer fans are going to whine if Chris Olave does stuff. I'm going to cry about it. We should have Chris Olave. We should trade it up. Or, uh, we got a linebacker. Uh. I just don't want to hear it. Football just started. I want to be happy. Yay, our guys are on the field. Yay, tackling. Yay for playing football. A whining coming out. Also, uh, for the record, they also drafted Trevor Penning. So if Rashawn Gary could just rip his face directly off of his head. It's an awfully graphic thing to say, but I'm just saying, if he could just do work, that would be lovely. I know that's probably more of a Preston thing if he ends up playing left tackle, but, you know, if we could just maybe slide Gary over there just for like a minute, no offense to Preston. I know Preston's good at stuff and everything, but man, it would be real nice if, if Rashawn could just get a couple reps over there and could just embarrass the guy. Because to be honest, if we're, if we're doing this thing, which we probably will, where we're comparing their first round picks, which is two guys that if the Packers got Penning and Olave, um, Packer fans probably would have been a lot happier. Granted, it was at 11 and 19 before either of our guys went, but still, I'm just saying. It would have made Packer fans much happier. If our guys can do better, that'd be great. And I don't really see why not, because the the interior offensive line of this team, and granted, I don't know how much the starters are actually going to play for either team, but I know the rookies probably will, which is to say a lobby's on the field, Penning's on the field, Walker's on the field, Wyatt's on the field. And I know the interior offensive line of this team is terrible. So if they pull their starters and put in their backups, I don't think they get better. And so I envision Devontae Wyatt and Walker having very little issues. Sending Walker on a blitz would make me quite happy. And if we can get Kingsley out there to just maybe one time just beat Penning, good enough. Just one time, that's all we need, good enough. I'm just saying. Uh, A couple other newsworthy notes. Randall Cobb on rookie wide receiver Christian Watson, quote, he has the total package, just being around him for the past week, seeing uh, seeing some of the things he can do. He has all the tools, he's very gifted. Cobb said he drove down to practice with Watson on Tuesday, reminded him, quote, just enjoy the process and have fun with it. Don't get so caught up in your head and press and think that it's going to happen overnight because it never does. So um, nothing really ground earth shattering there. I think we might try to read too much into that and be like, he said that he's the total package, so he's going to be good. No, he's saying he's big and he's tall and he's fast. We already know that. He also talked to him in person and said, don't expect things to just, you know, make sense and be easy all of a sudden these things take time in other words don't expect i mean he could be talking to us and saying the same things don't expect him to just come out of the gate and be great at this these things take time now with that said i was trying to think about this and i may have to think a little bit more but i had the thought if you had to pick one guy 
that was going to break out just based on things that you've looked at over time um which guy do you think would make the most sense that's going to have a great year and the the first thing that would come to mind while well, it would be the first guy they picked or, or maybe Wyatt or something one of the first round picks but there's not a great track record of linebackers in the first round there just isn't I've talked about that ad nauseum. That doesn't mean Quay is going to be terrible. It doesn't mean any of that. I'm not trying to say that. I'm just thinking through, you know, statistics, defensive tackles. I've showed you there has not been one good good defensive tackle in like the last two or three drafts. I'm talking period, like not one. Doesn't mean our guy can't be great. I'm just saying if we're going based on what I've seen recently, he's not the best bet. However, I basically played the entire clip of uh, uh, Ben Solak when he was talking about wide receivers and how a lot of these guys are coming right out of college and in their first years are just dominating. If you had to put money down, it would be on a wide receiver, and why not take the one that was taken the earliest? If you want to say the whole small school thing is, you know, kind of problematic for you, then fine, go with Romeo Dobbs, I guess. But I think you take the massive intelligence of Christian Watson, along with the size and the speed and the athleticism and all that, I tend to think he might be the safest bet. So while two things can be true at the same time, number one, it's stupid to expect him to come right out of college, especially a small school, and just be great right away. If I had to put money down, if you forced me and you said one of these guys is going to have a great rookie season, the other guys, meh, meh to garbage. Number one, wouldn't be super surprised. Number two, my bet would probably be Christian Watson. I wouldn't have a massive amount of confidence in that, but it would be my, my bet. Um, in other news, Lazard is also not there. He has not signed his tender. It's another thing that people are freaking out about. Um, sounds like he's just trying to enjoy some, some time away before he comes back, which would indicate to me Lazard is, he basically saw the two guys in front of him leave and realized he is now wide receiver one and, um, kind of the big dog in town and just has no fears in the world and said, you know what? I'm going to kick my feet up this year. I'm going to take my time. It's no competition. <laughs> I'm the man. But it sounds like he's going to be missing all of OTAs and minicamp. Um, not really expected to be back until uh, July. Again, you know, I'm not a football player. I'm not saying I would do it if I was a football player, especially if I was Aaron Rodgers and I was basically a billion-dollar man. I had all the money in the world I could ever need. I have everything I could need. Nobody can tell me what to do. Would I be there? Probably not. Lazard, who's still never really gotten that big payday, and this is his best opportunity with everybody being gone to completely dominate, which, by the way, wasn't really planning on doing it today. But uh, from what I can tell, the last two years, there's only been one day that Lazard has played that Devontae has not. Go find that and go look at his stat line. Dude has a really, really good opportunity to really, really dominate. And, um, you know, even if Green Bay decides, hey, we've got some guys here, we don't need to pay Lazard a ton of money to stay. He's got a great opportunity to make. I mean, look at what MVS did. MVS never did anything for this team in terms of being this great, massive weapon, tons of yards, touchdowns, any of that stuff. Nothing. He still got ten million bucks a year. So if I'm Lazard, I'm I would treat it like Rashawn Gary does. You know, I, I know I keep bringing him up, but I mean, the guy just never stops working. He never, 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 never just stops working. And he said, like in his most recent video, what? Why is he doing it? Money. Fair enough. <laughs> Fair enough. And again, Aaron got his money. And there's no there's no telling. Maybe Rashawn gets his money and he's like, all right, I can I can take a little bit of time off. I got my $30 million a year, which by the way, if he crushes it this year, probably going to be getting about $30 million a year. Anything under that is a massive steal for the Green Bay Packers. But yeah, I mean, that's the thing. You, that's what's sitting out there. If you can be one of the top pass rushers in football, you're looking at $30 million a year. Why would you do anything other than work? Why would you do anything other than becoming a better pass rusher? That should be the only thing you do from the time you wake up to the time you go to sleep until you get that contract for $30 million a year. That's it. That's all you do. And then when you get paid, dude, pfft, do whatever you want. Now, as, as a Packer fan, please don't ever stop with the hunger. Get that second paycheck. Get, 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 you know, get, get the $35 million a year contract three, four years later. But Lazard is kind of in that same camp. You've, you've gotten some money, but you've never gotten some money. Why, why not? I mean, do you not think you can get it? Or I don't, I don't understand, but whatever. Again, I get it, right? It's, 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 it's for the guys that don't know what they're doing. It's installs and all that. But I don't know. Maybe you're better off training somewhere else. That's entirely possible. I don't know. 
According to Aaron Nagler, and I'm not going to read this whole article, but this was his summary, quote, he's trying to enjoy his offseason in Iowa before heading back to Green Bay in July. That doesn't sound like he's putting in work somewhere else. It sounds like he wants to enjoy his vacation. Dude, you don't get a vacation. This is it, man. This is this is all you get. You get maybe one more crack at football. Granted, I mean, if you're taking care of your money, you've made plenty of money, but don't you want to get even like an $8 million a year contract or something? Wouldn't it be great to get a signing bonus of, I don't know, 20 30 million dollars you don't want that you don't care all right whatever that's fine i'm just saying i don't know all i know is the the only thing in between you and massive amounts of money is christian watson uh sammy watkins romeo dobbs samori toure randall cobb who by the way randall cobb is there does he need it is he looking to get a massive contract sometime in the near future no does he need extra time in the off you know learning the system maybe a little bit Probably not, but maybe a little bit. But he's there, isn't he? For whatever small, minor benefit there may be. And once again, and I've said this before, Randall Cobb deserves a massive amount. Everything you want in a guy, as far as leadership, in terms of just being a great team player, Randall Cobb is that dude. But these are the guys that are going to prevent you from getting paid. And if they take a half a step and step in front of you, and you're, you're the number two wide receiver behind any of these guys, there goes a big chunk of money for you. Go be the number one dude. You have that ability, you have that opportunity with a bunch of young guys and your rapport with Aaron Rodgers. Don't let somebody take that job from you. And there's a lot of guys looking to take that job. Amari Rodgers is on that list. That doesn't even mention Malik Taylor, Jawan Winfrey. Not even talking about the tight ends like Tyler Davis, who is like the, the, all the rage all of a sudden. By the way, if that guy isn't the number one tight end, he is a massive disappointment because of all the, the hype I've heard of that guy. From the GM to the head coach to the now the special teams coach, just singling him out about how great he is. That dude better be like tight end one, week one. But um, why don't we just take a break here? Just feels like a decent time. We'll continue on with this, and if we get through it, we'll talk about some other things. But um, you know how she goes. As always, please remember to check out uh, Drew's GoFundMe. Thank you to Michael Kamuda. I think I mentioned that already, but that was seven days ago for his $5 donation. Thank you to Neil O'Donnell two days ago with a $20 donation. We are at $5,565 to help Drew get his seizure service dog. He's looking for $7,440. So we are under $2,000 away. Again, if everybody listening went over there, it's pinned to the top of my Twitter. So if you go to pack underscore daddy on Twitter, go to my profile. Right at the top is the GoFundMe Everybody listening gives a dollar. Well, then he's going to be able to get two dogs. But the point is, we're there. So please consider it if you have it. I know for a lot of people it's tough times, but not for everybody. Some of us have at least a couple expendable dollars. So if you got it, it would be uh, fantastic. I'd love to be able to close this out and um, and whatnot. But uh, why don't we take a break and uh, we'll be right back. Hey, U.S. Cellular customers, I've got good news. So don't hit skip forward just yet. I'm talking about their special customer event, Us Days. What's Us Days? It means exclusive offers just for their customers, just to say thanks, like up to $1,200 to upgrade to any new phone. No, I didn't just misread that. That's up to $1,200 off. They must really like you. Us Days at U.S. Cellular. Exclusive offers just for you, just to say thanks. Right now, U.S. Cellular customers get up to $1,200 to upgrade to any new phone. Terms apply. I want to tell you guys real quick about our new sponsor, Factor. Factor makes delicious, ready-to-eat meals, and they get sent right to your door. They have 35 different options every single week that you can choose from, including keto, calorie smart, vegan and veggie, and more. And there's even more to enjoy with over 55 nutrition-packed add-ons that help make your weekly meal planning even more delicious. There's no prep work. There's no messing up six different bowls, mixing stuff. Factor meals are 100% ready to heat and eat. No prep, no cook, no cleanup. Factor is also very flexible with your schedule. You can get as much or as little as you need by choosing between 6 to 18 meals per week. You can also pause or reschedule your deliveries anytime. Factor is less expensive than takeout, and every meal is dietitian approved. So head to factormeals.com slash packdaddy50 and use code packdaddy50 to get 50% off. That's code packdaddy50 at factormeals.com slash packdaddy50 to get 50% off. Continuing on, this isn't exactly in order, it's just in the order that I got, you know, the news or whatever. So we, we still got more OTA news. However, 
I don't want to forget it. The 2023 and 2024 NFL Scouting Combine will continue to be in Indianapolis. It sounds like this is what everybody wants. Um, I think for some of us, it seems interesting. For those of us that don't go, like myself, it seems like it would be an interesting thing to be able to have that go around. Maybe you could come to Wisconsin or Chicago or something a little bit closer, although Indianapolis is, I mean, that's about as close as you can get. There's not too many cities closer. Um, but for the most part, it sounds like it's just kind of a perfect situation. The the uh, facilities, the hotels, everybody's just kind of gotten gotten it down. Now, granted, the whole process has turned to garbage, but that's a completely separate issue. That has nothing to do with Indianapolis. That has to do with wanting it to be televised. And so um, they've made the event borderline dangerous for the players. So now the players don't participate. So we don't get as many times because of all the stupid stuff. But that that has nothing to do with Indianapolis. So it's staying in Indianapolis. And I think it probably should stay that way because it just it just sounds like it's 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 set up perfectly. I need to get out there sometime, by the way. Um, there's also talks about eliminating the Pro Bowl, which I don't think anybody in the world cares. I don't think I don't know of anybody that watches that. I haven't watched that in probably five, six, seven, eight, ten years. I have no idea the last time I watched it. The only, as a matter of fact, the last time I remember going out of my way to watch it was the time they had um, what was it? It was like Deion Sanders and some other guys, and they did like a draft. And I remember I turned on the draft because I thought that would be interesting, and I watched like thirty seconds and I turned it off because it was stupid. And I don't think I even watched that game. So, I mean, it's it's been a long time. And nobody cares. It's not interesting. So the point is, I don't care what they do with it. I don't think they're going to have a plan that that is going to be interesting. I think they should just bring back that quarterback competition thing because I watched that every year without fail, and I loved it. And I remember being stunned every time Brett Favre didn't win any of the events, especially where he had to throw it real far because that was like his thing. And a lot of times he did win, but I don't think he did every time. But it was just awesome because I know we have a great quarterback in Brett Favre, and uh, he just dominated all the events and it was great and fun to watch and it was just kind of a laid-back fun environment I mean they were just kind of hanging out and goofing around obviously nobody's at risk of being injured why not or I mean if it if it's not that just do some kind of an event like that so, something where you can it's a it's a way to say my guy's better I mean you could just you, you know what would be more entertaining than the Pro Bowl line up the fastest wide receivers and let them do a foot race let them do a foot race. More interesting. Tyreek Hill against whoever. You could just have a challenge. Like, who wants to challenge Tyreek? It doesn't even have to be wide receivers. Give me, give me a corner. Let Eric Stokes go out there and race him. Dude, I would watch that. I would rather watch a foot race than the Pro Bowl. You could have different events. I mean, almost make it like the Combine, but, you know, just try to keep it low. In. Again, the quarterback thing makes sense because the odds of a quarterback getting hurt just throwing a football is very low. Like me throwing a football, I hurt my shoulder every time because I don't apparently have no idea what the throwing motion is supposed to be like. And if I throw too many times, my shoulder is going to start to hurt. I, I, I cap out at about 20 throws before my shoulder starts to hurt. Quarterback's not really an issue. Even if you did, you know, remember like back in Madden when you would do those drills to try to, you know, I don't know, I don't even remember what it was. You get leveled up a little bit or something. Just do those kinds of drills, man. You have like, you know, I don't know how you could even do it. Remember that one where you're like the running back and you try to run and there's like two defenders and it was real easy and then there would be three and then there'd be four and then there'd be five. I mean, you could just, you could set that up with like flags, you know, just flag football, just try to score on, you know, there's like obstacles there and if you can score against these two defenders, you win. And if you, I don't know, it, 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 pretty much literally anything that's, that's coming to mind would be like, yeah, that'd be more interesting than the Pro Bowl. So I don't care what they do with it as long as it goes away because it's stupid. Anyways, couple OTA updates here. Uh, this is via Ryan Wood. Shout out to all the guys that are there giving updates. Not even five minutes only into OTA practice, a new Packers special teams coordinator, Rich Pisakia, is barking at punt team about how to break the huddle. Drill sergeant mentality. Love to see it. Also, just kind of... It really just shows the failings of the previous administration, if you will. You know, there's a lot of talk about it. it's not his fault, it's our fault, and it, uh, just a lot of nonsense, right? He's not doing anything wrong. We're, we're just not doing this, that, or the other. The fact that these guys don't know how to properly break a huddle, and, you know, granted, maybe they did know how, but then they come back and they just kind of get a little sloppy, but it's the basics, it's the fundamental, and this is why a guy like Rich Bisakia makes sense. Get a guy that knows everything there is to know about special teams down to the minute details and is going to demand perfection of the minute details. The fact that five minutes in, this guy's screaming about being sloppy about the most basic of basic things, 
doesn't surprise me a little bit because it was one of the most historically bad special teams units in history. And it's great to see that five minutes in, he's going, why do you guys suck so bad? Holy cow. It's, it's a great, it's honestly a great feeling. Like, good. Thank you for finding massive flaws in the most basic thing ever. That, that instantly inspires, inspires confidence that we can at least get a little bit better. Maybe, maybe the players are just pure trash and there's, there's an upward ceiling. Um, but let's at least get to whatever that ceiling is. Because right now we are, we are just, we got a jackhammer and is just trying to find new lows. Uh, David Bakhtiari and Elton Jenkins are at Packers OTAs. Bakhtiari and Shorts, no jersey on the sidelines. Jenkins in his, in his jersey on the sidelines going through rehab on his ACL. The David Bakhtiari thing is massively concerning to me. I've been avoiding that, avoiding saying that. And look, it's possible, you know, I, I don't want to hammer it too hard because it's possible we get news tomorrow that's like, oh yeah, David Bakhtiari is actually out because, um, you know, he tweaked his ankle or something. I, I don't know. But, um, dude, it's been a long time. I don't see any reason why he should be still rehabbing his injury. I just don't. I don't get it at this point. Like, th- this is where he was a year ago. He was in shorts on the sideline doing dr- ACL drills, looking good. Hey, he's looking great. He might play week one, man. He's looking so good. Right? A year ago, he was jumping around like a gazelle. Now, granted, that was probably part of the reason he didn't heal properly, and maybe that's what the Packers are doing. They're like, look, his, his knee just needs time. And so we're going to give him maximum time. Basically, the doctors have cleared him. He's 100% ready to go. He could play week one. But why push it? We don't need fluid rushing into his knee. Let's just give it maximum time, and we're not going to put him out there. I don't know. But I don't like it. I would be much happier to find out that David Bakhtiari is back, because why wouldn't he be? But he's not. Um, Wes Hodkowitz, quite a few vets here, including Aaron Jones, Devondre Campbell, Casey Bout, those OTAs. That was clever. Dean Lowry, Randall Cobb, Adrian Amos, Darnell Savage. Matt Schneidman, Packers I don't see during stretch period. Sammy Watkins, Aaron Rodgers, Alan Lazard, Jair, Razul, Rashawn, uh, Garvin, uh, Randy Ramsey, Mercedes Lewis, Preston Smith. And then he says Kylan Hill, Bakhtiari, Jenkins, Tunyon, Lowry on the side working out with the rehab group. Uh, Andy Herman pointed out that uh, with Rashawn Gary out, Jonathan Garvin out, Randy Ramsey out, Preston Smith out, that's some serious opportunity for Kingsley Kiki, who are Kingsley Kiki, geez, Kingsley Enigbare or Enigbar or whatever. I don't know, which is a great point. He's basically getting one-on-one tutelage from, well, from everybody. Uh, Rich Pisakia galloping through the air during special teams drills on day one of OTAs, watching him coach already the most entertaining thing today. Expletive count, both in excitement and frustration, is already high. Devondre Campbell, Aaron Jones, and Adrian Amos, active participants in special teams drills today. So question of whether or not we'll see more veterans on special teams, uh, we don't know. But I'm already getting the vibe that the answer is going to be yes. And I think we kind of assumed it would be yes anyways. So um, confirmation, I guess. Uh, Rich Pisaki with a good work to his special teams after high effort coverage period. Interesting to see Campbell and A. Uh, a. Jones out there. It's Pisaccia, isn't it? I already forgot. That's always the hard part about that. There, there was a way that I said it and it was wrong, and it turned out it was the other thing. And I can't remember which one's which. Dang it. I don't know. Somebody will correct me. It's fine. It's a good thing about having a uh, larger audience is there's so many people that are more than happy to tell you every time you're wrong. So I'm sure that'll get cleared up. Uh, Packers first offensive line, Yash Nyman at left tackle, John Runyon left guard, Josh Myers at center, Royce Newman at right guard, Cole Van Landen at right tackle. A lot of people really kind of freaked out about Cole Van Landen, not freaked out, but surprised, especially about Cole Van Landen. But I don't really know that we should be necessarily. If we assume that the rookies are not going to be getting first crack at anything, um, Alton Jenkins isn't out there. Zach Tom isn't going to be out there because, again, he's a rookie. Um, Caleb Jones is a rookie. I mean, who, who else is going to be that guy? Yash is already at left tackle. Rashid Walker is a rookie. Sean Ryan is a rookie. The only options really are Cole Van Lannan, Jake Hansen, who is purely a center, and Michael Minette, who I think is also a pure center. So, I mean, Cole Van Lannan is the only guy left. And no, that is not a knock on the rookies. Oh, wow, Zach Tom must be trash. Dude, they, they have no idea how good Zach Tom is because they haven't even started anything yet. The point is... This is just how it works. Guys that have been here get first crack. So, there, there, I mean, there's almost no other way that you could sort this out. Yash is the only tackle that's available. 
John Runyon left guard because that's what he is. Josh Myers at center because that's what he is. Royce Newman at right guard because that's what he is. And then Cole Van Lannon at right tackle. That's, I don't, I, again, I don't know what else it could be. Um, the next lineup, I'll tell you what it could be. They put, put Royce Newman at right tackle and then put Jake Hansen at right guard. Now, again, Jake is purely a center, but number one, I guess we'll get a crack at seeing if he can do right guard because why not? Versatility is a good thing. But then beyond that, there's just no other options, right? There's, we, we don't have a, uh, a great way to sort through all this. So that was the next lineup. Slide Newman out and then put uh, Hanson at, at right guard. Uh, rookie Christian Watson working with Randall Cobb on the starting offense with Jordan Love at quarterback. Kenny Clark uh, working quite a bit at three tech with TJ Slayton at nose. Jerron Reed at defensive end. Uh, Dominic Eberly, kicker, good from 39 uh, left hash, 41 right hash. It says uh, the, then the Packers broke for seven on sevens and then kicked two more. Eberly was good from 43 on the right hash, hash missed from 45 left hash. So uh, three of four missed from 45 yards out. Inside linebacker Devondre Campbell almost intercepted a high Jordan Love pass in the short middle to Christian Watson. Campbell squeezed his forearm after fighting for the football with Watson, but stayed on the field and appears fine. That's what you get trying to mess with Christian Watson, son. <laughs> Sorry. Uh, Rico Gafford made his debut with the Packers and already had a pass breakup in seven on sevens. Uh, Wes Hodkowitz pointing out that Tariq Carpenter is massive. He said, I used to think Sean Richardson was a big safety. Tariq Carpenter is massive with cleats on. Uh, Darnell Savage had back-to-back pass breakups uh, via Matt Schneidman. Two straight impressive PBUs for Darnell Savage Jr. during team with Jordan Love throwing. First one guarding Daphne, second one DeGuara. Love responds with a great touch pass over the middle to Eli Wolf for a big gain. So it's good that not only did he have two back-to-back pass breakups, but against tight ends because, well, let's be honest, if we have a bad memory of Darnell Savage, it was against tight ends, so... Uh, Darnell Savage quote on inside linebacker Devondre Campbell. He says, just, uh, just such a humble guy to see someone who comes to work every single day like that. And it pays off. It's a joy to see shoot. He's one of the best teammates ever now again. And I, I can't, I hate to keep going back to this, but again, I don't want to pretend. And, and, and I think it's silly to pretend that it doesn't matter when you show up, players say that it matters to them. When you demonstrate to them that, you know, even though you don't need to be here, you show up. You want to be here. You're willing to put in the work. You're you're willing to show up and be with the guys. Now, if you ask Darnell Savage, is it a is it a big deal that you know Rashawn didn't show up or um, Preston didn't show up or Aaron Rodgers didn't show? Up? Of course, he's going to say no. So don't even bother sending me any clips of them saying. Of course, they're going to say no. They're not going to trash their team. And if they do, that's a really big problem. But there's no way you can say it matters to me when guys show up, and it doesn't matter me to me when guys doesn't don't show up. That's impossible. Those two things can't coexist. So when they flat out tell you it means a lot to me that these guys show up, they're also saying that it's not great when people don't show up. Anyways, I think we're all caught up. Uh, We could move on to some other stuff, but we're not going to. Again, with the technical issues, I'm kind of out of time anyways. So um, more goodness coming tomorrow. But for today, I think we're going to call it. You folks have yourselves a fantastic day. I will talk to you tomorrow. Have a good one. Bye-bye.